targets acting on sodium channels. First of all, we will see what are the different types of ion channels. Ion channels can be classified by which they are going either from outside to inside of the cell membrane or from inside to the outside of the cell membrane. For example, the ion channels like sodium are going into the cell and similarly calcium again going into the cell and chloride ions are also going into the cell. So these type of ion channels which are going into the cell we call inward going ion channels. On the other hand, the ion channels like potassium are going outside of the membrane so which we call outward going potassium channels. Now among these four ion channels you can see sodium and calcium which enter into the cell can produce a depolarization in the cell. But chloride and potassium they can produce a hyperpolarization. You can observe that chloride even entering into the cell produce hyperpolarization because it is negatively charged. So sodium and calcium are responsible for depolarization and chloride and potassium are responsible for hyperpolarization. Now here we will concentrate how the sodium channels are targeted by the different types of drugs. How these ion channels are blocked. So drugs acting on the ion channels can be classified into two types. For example, sodium is entering into the cell membrane through the ion channel when the ion channel is open. So some of the drugs called blockers are going to produce a physiological block in the ion channel thereby they inhibit the transport of the sodium through these ion channels. So they are called as ion channel blockers. Another category of drugs are there where sodium is going into the cell as usual through the ion channels but these drugs are not blocking the ion channel cavity they are acting on an allosteric site where they are going to inhibit the site and called as modulators. When this drug acting on this site they can produce either positive or negative effect on the ion channel activity. Here we have shown a negative effect on the ion channel activity otherwise the drugs can also produce a positive effect on the ion channel activity. So that's why they are called as modulators. So if they produce the positive effect on the ion channel activity they are called as positive modulators and a negative effect on the ion channel activity they are called as negative modulators. In this way the drugs acting on the ion channels may be of two types either blockers or modulators. Blockers directly bind to the site where the sodium channel is going to be opened and modulators are going to bind to another site what is, which is an allosteric site thereby modulate the ion channel activity. So most of the drugs are acting like the blockers which are directly binding to the site where the sodium channels are going to be binding. Now we will see the different types of sodium channel blockers. Sodium channel blockers can be classified based on the drugs acting on the different types of sodium channels. First one is voltage gated sodium channels. Second one is renal tubular sodium channels. So mainly drugs are acting on these type of sodium channels. So let us start with the first one voltage gated sodium channel blockers. Where these voltage gated sodium channels are present and where the drugs are blocking these ion channels. First important location is the heart and second is the central neurons and third is the local neurons. As voltage gated sodium channels are always responsible for excitation. So in all these three locations they produce the excitation of the particular tissue. So in the heart, the drugs acting on the heart are mainly class 1 antiarrhythmic agents and on the central neurons anti-epileptic drugs and on the local neurons local anastics. In this way voltage gated sodium channel blockers are three types class 1 antiarrhythmic agents, anti-epileptics and local anastics. So let us start with the first one voltage gated sodium channel blockers acting on the heart that is a class 1 antiarrhythmic agents. So class 1 antiarrhythmic agents can be further divided into class 1a, class 1b and class 1c. They are going to be separated based on their kinetics of association and dissociation with the sodium channels. Some of the drugs are associating and dissociating very fastly with these ion channels and some of the drugs are going to associate and dissociate very slowly with these ion channels. So they have the different kinetics from fast to slow. 
So here we can divide class 1 B drugs are having fast association dissociation and class 1 A drugs are having intermediate and class 1 C drugs are having slow kinetics. So you can remember like order B, A, C. B is having fast, A is having intermediate and C is having slow. In this way class 1A, 1B, 1C drugs only differ in the rate in the rate of association and dissociation with the ion channels. So how this sodium channel is going to be activated in the heart? If you observe the electrophysiology, the normal resting membrane potential of the heart is around minus 90 millivolts. So at this resting membrane potential, the heart cells are inactive. This resting membrane potential can be slowly increased by an action potential to the minus 70 millivolts which is called threshold potential. So a slow rise from the minus 90 millivolts to the minus 70 millivolts will cause activation of the sodium channels in the cardiac cell. Now at minus 70 millivolts the voltage gated sodium channels are open which cause a sudden increase in the membrane potential. The membrane potential suddenly increases to the plus 10 millivolts resulting in the depolarization of the cardiac cells. Plus 10 millivolts the voltage gated sodium channels are closed. In this way phase 0 involves the fast acting sodium channels which are opened at the minus 70 millivolts and closed at the plus 10 millivolts. That's why they call voltage gated sodium channels. Now the class 1 drugs are acting on the phase 0 that is a rapid depolarization phase on the heart. So class 1E, 1B and 1C drugs. Drugs are quinidine, disopyramide and procainamide. All these are the class 1A drugs. And lidocaine and phenytoin are the class 1B drugs. And drugs like flecainide and propafenone are the class 1C drugs. So in this way class 1E, 1B and 1C drugs can be classified. Second type of drugs acting on the voltage gated sodium channels is the anti-epileptic agents which are acting on the central neurons. So we have the drugs like phenytoin, carbamjepine, oxcarbjepine, valproate and lamotrigin. These are the various drugs which are acting on the voltage gated sodium channels. And here the last two drugs are acting by multiple mechanisms and one of the mechanisms involves the blocking of the voltage gated sodium channels. So here you can observe phenytoin is one of the drug which is also classified as an anti-arrhythmic agent. So phenytoin is a both anti-arrhythmic agent as well as anti-epileptic agent. But nowadays clinical use is mainly confined to anti-epileptic uses. And third category of drugs acting on the voltage gated sodium channels are the local anastics which are blocking the local neurons. So drugs like lidocaine, benzocaine, procaine, prilocaine, bupivocaine, all these are the drugs which are ending with the cane are the local anastics. So these local anastics again block the voltage gated sodium channels at the local neurons thereby inhibit the local neurotransmission. And here again you can see lidocaine is one of the drugs which is also classified as a class 1B anti-arrhythmic acid. So lidocaine is a both local anesthetic as well as anti-arrhythmic acid. So these are the various drug targets acting on the voltage gated sodium channels. Now let us go to the renal tubular sodium channels and how the drugs are going to be acting on these sodium channels. So within the renal tubule, suppose this is the inside the renal tubule and this is the serum that is outside this renal tubule. The sodium cannot cross passively through the renal tubules. It is going to be absorbed into the serum by a specialized ions we call the renal tubular sodium channels. The sodium is reabsorbed through these renal tubular sodium channels. Now drugs like amyloride and triamterene are the drugs which are directly blocking these uh, renal tubular sodium channels and act as a uh, renal tubular sodium channel blockers. So these drugs are going to inhibit the sodium reabsorption thereby increase the sodium excretion. And absorption of sodium through the renal tubules is also controlled by another type of uh, mediator that is the aldosterone. This aldosterone is going to acting on the aldosterone receptors which cause the 
increase the expression of the renal tubular sodium channels which increases the sodium reabsorption. So aldosterone is one of the hormone which increases the sodium reabsorption. And some of the drugs like spironolactone and epilnone are going to act as an antagonist on the aldosterone receptor thereby inhibit the reabsorption of the sodium through the renal tubules. So in this way amyloride and triamtrin are acting like a blockers on the renal tubular sodium channels whereas spironolactone and epilnone are acting like negative modulators on the renal tubular sodium channels. And again all these drugs are called as potassium sparing diuretics because they inhibit the sodium reabsorption when the sodium is not reabsorbed potassium is retained in the body thereby these are called as potassium sparing diuretics that means they decrease the potassium excretion thereby leading to hyperkalemia otherwise these drugs can be used in the situation called hypokalemia so these are the various drugs acting on the renal tubular sodium channels